Welcome back. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to eliminate this CSS. So we're going to kill app CSS. We're going to kill this index CSS. That's going to go bye bye. And then we don't need this logo file anymore. And we're going to go ahead and also kill the app. We're going to leave our service worker, our index, and our app. And then the first thing that a lot of people do is they create a components folder. So you can if you want to, it's very common practice. And I'm going to drag in my app.js and then these two can stay here. So this, these are basically what start the app and then they're going to now point into our components folder. Okay, save that, save this file and then we'll see that our app is automatically refreshed but we have an error. So it's pointing to a CSS file that obviously no longer exists. So we can eliminate that. Go back and our, we have our index one as well. So we want to clear that out. Oh, it's also looking for logo. Let me go back. And we want to get rid of this as well. And then there we have it. So we have welcome to React, get started, edit the source app file. All right, so we're going to look at two patterns. And for that, I'm going to pull up uh, basically two patterns. The first is a container component. So this app is what we would call a container component. It's uh, an ES6 class, and it is the heart of the app. There's many cases where you may want to load secondary components inside of this. And I'm going to show next how we would nest components. So for now, we'll go ahead and take this container bit here. We'll go ahead and paste this in. Actually, we won't do that. Right now, I'm just going to go ahead and kill a lot of this unnecessary markup. Cure our dividus. There we go. And we don't need that. Say welcome to React from container component. Yeah. And then we're going to also create another component here. So we're just going to create a new empty file and we'll call that display. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import display from and then since we're in the same folder all we have to say is dot forward slash display we don't have to include dot js because uh, webpack is smart enough to know what the file extension should be or possibilities of it and it will bring it in for us and it helps if I spell that right okay so now we have display available to us and what we can do is we can actually just nest this and what this is is it becomes a, a custom component. So we can just say display and then do our self-closing tag and we want to make sure we have this in the right format so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start out with some boilerplate here and I'll walk through this really quickly. So we're just here we're just saying we just need React, whereas in our container component we're saying we need component from React. So a component has a full life cycle, which a life cycle you can think of it as different stages in your app loading or changing. So there's um, an on did mount, which means okay the app is already mounted, it's on will mount, there's will receive props, there's will update, there's a lot of different life cycle hooks and I'll show more of that later. But for right now, suffice it to say, a container component has the full life cycle and it is called from the React package inside of the, uh, the React um, package itself. So it's like a sub, a sub app. Um, and then display, we only have React. Here you'll notice we're not calling this as a class, we're calling a const called display and we're passing an arrow function. So we'll see this would be any props that we wanted to pass that will get pushed in. That's why we have the arrow that's going into our function. And we are returning just a simple div. Um, as of right now we don't have fiber so we 
have to uh, have one parent node, so that's usually just people just put a div, and then we're saying hello from display component, and then of course we are we have to export something, so we're returning this and we're exporting default, which is display, which is our app of here. So again, to reemphasize, this is our display component. It's called a display component because you can think of it as a template. There's no functional um, mutating of any data at all. It's just data is getting passed in, we're templating it, we're displaying it, that's it. So these are also referred to as dumb components and that's why. These are sometimes referred to as smart components um, or container components. And these are where all of your business logic would happen. If you're coming from Angular, you can think of this as kind of um, taking on some of the responsibilities of a controller, if you will. So we'll go ahead and save that and we'll see if we have any errors. And we don't, so we see Welcome to container component and then hello from display component. So if we go ahead and inspect this, see what this looks like, we'll see our markup right here. Here's our, our, um, our root class here and our welcome and then we'll see our empty div with an empty class and it says hello from display component, just like this. The next uh, video we're going to show how to actually pass data from this so-called container component and we're going to learn how we can actually inject data and pass it into our child component, the display component, so that we can use it as a template and we can map it to parts of that template. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.